confidential. Oklahoma says it's illegal to do this in your backyard. Since the 1950s, it's been illegal to do this in your backyard. But in Norman, Oklahoma, the law just changed. And no, it has nothing to do with weed. ADU, Accessory Dwelling Unit, Granny Flat, Casita, Mother-in-Law Suite, Raj Apartment, Guest House, Pool House. It's that tiny house in the backyard that you can rent out to anyone you want. A college student maybe and have some supplemental income or you can put your grandma there, your grandpa or your own college student or any family member or you can even rent it out short term on game days. Yes, it's here to stay. City zoning all across the state has said no until now. When I started looking into this, I thought, why can't people build wherever they want in their own backyards? Little did I know, the advent of the automobile brought about all kinds of restrictive zoning laws back in the 50s that created urban sprawl and nice little rows of houses with no chickens in the backyard. <laughs> But just last week, Norman, Oklahoma became the first town in Oklahoma to crush that zoning law and open the door wide open for more people to live closer into campus and into the center part of old Norman. If you build it, they will come. Norman is the first in Oklahoma to adopt it, but Oklahoma City will follow soon. I was just at a meeting with the zoning department yesterday where they laid out their whole master plan. They are actually in a nine year rehaul of all the zoning of Oklahoma City, and it's not to be completed until 2026. However, because the housing crisis is such a at peak right now and we want to bring more people into the urban core they're going to push this through and have it through hopefully by the end of this summer 2024 back to norman for a minute here's what it can look like and what it cannot look like there are still some zoning laws but it's much much freer 65 percent of your lot can be covered with house driveway pool second little house, sidewalks, basketball court, but 35% of your lot must remain permeable for the groundwater to go down into the ground. If you cover the whole entire lot with houses and concrete, then we get flooding problems, which is really bad. If you live in Norman, you already know that's a thing. 35% of the surface of your lot must be exposed to rainwater runoff. Rainwater runoff. So it has to be dirt, gravel, grass, plants, flower beds. Let the water go down. At least one off-street parking space must be added for the unit you've put in your backyard. However, next week, there's another planning meeting that might discuss this and even get rid of that. There's a limit to how big you can make the or tiny house. 650 square feet is the limit right now, which is not that small. That's actually just the footprint. You can go up and have a second story and it's 650 square feet. To give you a comparison, that's like a three car garage. So there's plenty of room in 650 square feet to put all the things you need to call, to call it an accessory dwelling unit. And what do you need? You need a place to eat, a place to sleep, and a place to bathe. So you don't have to have a full tub, but you do have to have a shower. You don't have to have an enormous kitchen, but you have to have a kitchenette. And you have to have a place to sleep. It can't be your little shed in the backyard that you popped a window unit into that isn't that's not enough just having electric is not enough you have to have all the pieces of plumbing to make a home livable there's a height restriction it cannot be taller than the original home so if the original home is a one story then your accessory dwelling unit must also be of similar height that way the neighbors don't have a tall house in your backyard looking over into their yard. That'd be kind of weird. That'd be kind of weird. 
One more thing that it cannot be, you cannot bring in a mobile home or a modular home. It can only happen in areas zoned for single family housing, which makes sense. And it may be used as short-term rental. What? It may be used as short-term rental. So we've already got too many Airbnbs in Norman, but on game day, they're all full. So if you have a short-term rental, in your backyard, yes, you can charge people to park on your lawn and you can charge people to stay in the little cottage in the backyard and make a little extra that way. These dwellings may be renovated inside your house or added outside. So it can be detached or attached. If you wanna turn your garage into a, a unit and rent it out, you can do it. If you wanna turn, uh, you wanna add a level to a garage apartment, you can do that. If you wanna start from the ground up and do something in your yard in the backyard, not connected to your house at all, that's fine as well. If you have a basement, not very many of us have basements in Oklahoma, in Norman, but if you have a basement, you can renovate that and rent it out. There's a study out of Berkeley, California that says rent on these kinds of backyard tiny houses is 58% lower than other kinds of rent. So that ought to be music to your ears. Students of the University of Oklahoma, of which my son is one, Ward 8 Council member Matt Peacock had this to say, accessory dwelling units promote urban infill, which means more people in the middle of the city and they enable multi-generational living whoop, whoop, which you know is what i'm all about here getting your family closer together so you can care for one another and he says they provide additional housing without impacting the surrounding areas yeah so as we look at oklahoma city for instance first-time homeowners are having to move further and further and further out and exchanging a low mortgage payment for a long commute. This allows people to stay closer in to work and be a little more connected to the amenities that are in the downtown areas. Matt Peacock also says they stimulate the local economy by bringing in some construction work and they allow homeowners with the units to generate additional income. I actually have some friends. Uh, mom is a stay at home full-time mom and dad is working. And she actually came to me and said, okay, if we sell this house and buy another one, that mortgage would require me to take a job. However, if I turn this room into a short-term Airbnb, I could stay home because that's gonna bring in so much money every month that I could actually stay home and we could just live in the, the rest of the house. And that's what they've done and it's been a dream. There's an excellent article by Kevin Eagleson in the OU Daily, dated February, April, May, no, yeah, yeah. Two months ago, Kevin was doing some excellent research on how this might affect Norman if it got pushed through. Now it has, and kudos to you, Kevin, on an excellent article. Link down below. Out in the newer neighborhoods, you can have a homeowner association. Then it's going to be up to each individual HOA to decide if they're going to allow these inside the neighborhood. What do you think? Would you mind if someone on your street added one of these in the backyard? How do you think it would change the neighborhood, the community, getting to know the neighbors and the kinds of things that happen on the street? You for it? You against it? And then what does it mean for buyers and for multi-generational families? Now that this is possible in Norman, you can find a home near campus that fits most of your family and build a guest cottage in the backyard for the rest of your family. I love it. Or you can buy a home and build a rental unit to lease to students in your backyard or faculty. Or you can buy a home, build a unit to use for a short-term game day house, short-term leases and rentals like Airbnb. Or you can buy an empty lot in the center core of Norman and build whatever you want to suit your family perfectly and live multi-generationally. We aren't the first college town to do this. 
Austin changed these zoning laws a while back and Lawrence, Kansas did this many years ago. Some of these cities that are more ahead of us have gotten organized and they have a whole list of plans that you can get from the city that are already pre-approved and I'm hoping that Norman will go that route and hire some architects who say yeah these are the kinds of things that would work great in the core of Norman and Oklahoma City. That makes the decision making process a lot easier when you can look at 25 plans and know that these all pass all the permitting and they fit the square footage measurements and they're gonna it's just gonna make the building process so much faster looking ahead I'm wondering about accessory commercial units also known as ACUs these would be like third places walkable spaces in neighborhoods a great example is the Midway Deli in Norman that's right in the middle of that cute old neighborhood. Let's switch over to Oklahoma City for a minute. One of the reasons that Oklahoma City wants to open this up sooner is because we have a lot of structural amenities in the urban core. We've put a lot of money into the light rail and the bus system. And it, the more people we can have coming in and using that, the better the quality of life will be. We're also not that excited that we have this reputation as being a driving only city. As you know, Oklahoma City is vast. It can take 45 to 50 minutes to drive from one end to the other, depending on the time of day and where you start. And so we would like to chip away at that reputation a little bit and create places in the urban core where you can live without a car because you are gonna be close to the bus stops and the rail stops and grocery stores. So this is another reason that people would prefer to stay in the urban core, but there's no affordable housing. So this is gonna be a new option to bring in some housing, at least at the rental spot, that will be more affordable. Now, why do I qualify that as rental? Because there will, will not be any lot splits if you have a house and you build something in the backyard when it's time to sell that you sell all of that together you cannot sell the front house and and sell the, the back house separately it's all on one lot and that all belongs to one owner some of you may be asking will this hurt my value no, it will increase your value because value is based on square footage. So if you have a 2,500 square foot house and you add a 500 square foot guest house in the back, you've upped your value because you've upped your square footage and you've upped your income power. Now you can have supplemental income from this property. So it's just the opposite. It won't hurt your value at all. In Oklahoma City, the rules are gonna be a little bit different. You can build up to 1,000 square feet. You can build up to 25 feet in the air. You can put a balcony on that top story. In Oklahoma City, it's gonna be 50% of the lot must remain green space permeable by water. In Norman, that's 35%. In Oklahoma City, that's 50%. So they give you um, leeway to build a bigger footprint, but you have to maintain the water permeability. Here's another unique thing about Oklahoma City. You've been in some neighborhoods where the house is set way back from the street and there's this enormous yard in the front. If you have a house at the back of the lot and you wanna build an accessory dwelling unit at the front, you may do it. It's a kind of a flip. You would build a bigger house at the front of your lot, which would be more like a family home, and then the small older home at the back, if it's under a thousand square feet, could become the accessory dwelling unit. Very cool. I like that. They've really thought through this. In Oklahoma City, they're going to limit some of the construction materials. So no corrugated, corrugated tin siding, no vinyl siding, but they will allow metal roofs, which I think is really wonderful. I like metal roofs in Oklahoma. 
I would say there's a real sense of excitement right now about changing the face of Oklahoma City to become a more walkable city. And even in Norman, that's going to be the result of adding these new units to the back of existing homes. Before leaving my grandpa's house, he always said, come here and give me some sugar. If you like and subscribe to this channel, that's just as sweet to me as sugar. And it really helps my channel grow. So if this has been informative to you, give me a like and a follow and share it with a friend. I'm Jim Kelsey. Until next time.